less professional. Right? Yes. So, so we have the basic idea about this, right? We already discussed the right. basic introduction of this topic. So, here, right, QTP. So, let's start, right? First, so the QTP have the basic feature, right? So, first we have to see how to record the script. So, how to create the scripts, right? So, the two things, the two basic things we have to discuss is first, how to create the automation scripts and how to run the scripts right these are the basic concepts that we have to discuss initially for a QTP right so in the discussion in the introduction section so we discussed that QTP supports VB language to generate the automation scripts right so whatever the automation scripts that we have to create for a functionality so that automation scripts can be generated by the QTP using VB language concepts right so in order to generate the scripts right so the QTP has to follow some syntax right so if you see any coding has to be done by the developers for implementing the functionalities. They will use some languages called Java, .NET, right? And for every language, right, they should they have some syntaxes, right? So based on that syntax only they'll code it. Okay. In the same way, in the QTP also to create the automation script statements, so it will create that automation script statements based on some syntax. Okay right so how the scripts are generated so these scripts can be generated using recording option so there will be a record option will be there in the QTP so to create the automation scripts okay so using this recording option right I'll show you just so from tomorrow onwards we'll see once you install in your system the software tomorrow onwards we'll see the practical so today I'll just complete the theory concept of that QTP right so here so record this is the record option right so using the recording option right so we can able to generate the recording options some settings we'll put okay and we are going to create the script here like this okay so how this script is creating so this script can be created using recording option and this script statements are generating based on the syntax right so what is that syntax because as a tester and when we are using the QDP so we should aware of that how this script is generating right so this script is generating based on the syntax defined by the QTP in VB language. And how can we create the script is based on the recording option. Okay. Right. So the syntax, we are talking about the syntax. Right? Okay. The syntax is defined for both web-based application and as well as window-based applications. So we already discussed it that. QTP using the QTP we can able to test both the web based application functionalities and as well as window based application functionalities so I think you remember what is window based and what is web based application right fine cool so for the window based application Window-based are standard, standalone application, whatever it may be. So for the window-based application, the syntax is defined like this. Window of 
एल एन डॉट टेक्स्ट ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ एल एन डॉट ऑपरेशन वेब बेस्ड एप्लीकेशन सो इट विल ओपन इन द ब्राउजर इट इज ए ब्राउजर ऑफ एल एन डॉट पेज ऑफ एल एन डॉट टेस्ट ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ एल एन डॉट ऑपरेशन सो दीज आर दिंटैक्सेस डिफाइन राइट फॉर बोथ विंडो बेस्ड एंड एज वेल एज वेब बेस्ड एप्लीकेशन सो यूजिंग दिस इंटैक्सेस द क्यू टी पी जनरेट द स्क्रिप्ट स्टेटमेंट वेन वी यूज द रिकॉर्ड ऑप्शन so when we use the record option for creating the scripts so the script statements are creating based on this syntax so this syntax is defined using the vb language right it is a these are the standard syntaxes that defined by the ktp to generate the automation script statements so to understand this syntaxes so what exactly the syntax means right what is ln what is test object what is operation so to get the idea to have it information about this syntax so first of all we should know what is object object properties object types class name and the logical name so we should have to know about this all these things if you are aware of this then you can easily understand this syntaxes right so first of all we will discuss about what is this object what is an object in general forget about the software application in general in general world what is an object object is that something ऑब्जेक्ट कैन बी an input box a button uh... yes so with respect to the software application we can call the objects generally an object is nothing but which we can feel and touch right so in general you can say a mobile is an object a pen is an object a laptop is an object even we can call a human being is an object right in general i'm talking about when it comes to the software application as you said that objects are nothing but entities in the software application an entity in the software application like push buttons radio buttons check box text box combo box windows dialog boxes images links right so these are all nothing but objects in an application okay right so every object have some properties so these are the properties used to define and identify so without properties an object cannot be defined and an object cannot be identified suppose for example i am saying that human being is an object human being right so if i consider human being is an object what are the properties of a human being gender color uh huh height yes name name first name last name height weight color education identification marks so all this comes under properties of a human being right yeah. in the same way whenever any object we are referring with respect to the application that object have some set of properties example if you consider push button the properties are 
label right so you can identify or you can differentiate the buttons in the page based on the label only okay okay button cancel button so okay is a label and cancel is the label so label height width right enable or disable right these are the properties of a button so like that for every object text box or combo box checkbox radio button for every object there should be a set of properties so these properties where use it to identify that object uniquely on or else to define it also right okay right. so object types so in qtp the object types are categorized into two right standard and user defined standard objects are nothing but default objects with set of standard properties so default objects with set of standard properties okay meaning is that so when we go through the application right now we are able to identify that okay this is a button this object is a radio button this object is a checkbox so how we are identifying it because in the software in the application terms right so those are already predefined okay so if this object is having these properties then we can get this object called this object will be called as so and so so they are already predefined right this set of standards right so if that objects are directly using in the application by the developer then we can say that objects are standard objects with respect in the application okay right so i'll show i'll show you the difference also once i explain the definition user defined objects are created and developed with one set of properties like suppose a button is there so as per the standard the button should have a label on the top of that one so if the developer is directly using the button with that standard properties then we can say that button is a that push button is a standard button suppose the developer does not want a label on the top of the button he just the developer requires a button a push button is required but the developer does not require the label he just want to place a image on the top of that button then the developer will create a button with the image on the top of that one so which is not a standard one which is a user defined one that we can call the user defined button okay i'll let you know the difference i'll show you the difference here uh, so this is a standard push button right sign in okay right now if i go to bing.com so this is a button again such but it is not a standard it's a user defined push button because so as far as we know that a standard push button should have a label on the top of that one but here this button is not having a label this button has image right this is what about user defined push button even if you go for google also the same thing right so here this is a button again right and this button is a user defined push button and this button is a standard push button okay so this is the difference okay right. class name so every object belongs to a particular category of the class and every object will have a class name so we belongs to the human beings right uh, i can say that living things right we belongs to the category of the class called living things we comes under the class called living things like that in the objects so based on some features right okay so they have categorized into classes right and that objects belongs we have a particular class name so what is that class name i will discuss that okay logical name so logical name is nothing but basic property value of an object 
So as we discussed that every object will have a set of properties. Out of the properties, one of the property we can call it as a, a basic property. That basic property value will be considered as a logical name by the QTP. In the script statement, ln is nothing but logical name only. Suppose if you consider human being, we have set of properties, name, first name, last name, height, weight, color. So out of the properties of a human being, the basic property of the human being is name only, right? Name right. is a basic property. So I am saying that logical name is nothing but basic property value. Suppose if you see push button, for a button it will take label. So if I click on this, so the label of this one is Google search. So then Google search will be taken as a logical name. Okay. The label of this one is. So this is the value of this basic property. Then this value will be considered as a logical name by the QT. Right? And here ln is nothing but a logical name. Okay. Now let's see. Till now clear and questions. So a label, uh, a label is the logical name. No, no, not label. Google. This one is a logical name. Okay, I mean. I'm uh, saying that basic property value. Okay. For every object, there should be a property which we which we'll call it as a basic property, okay. right? Okay. okay, that basic property value. See, V3 are there. V3 are having the same properties, but how, how we are differentiating each other among us, sorry, based on the values, name is equal to Naresh, name is equal to Vikas, name is equal to Samshwip. Mm -hmm. That value makes you the difference yes. between the objects. If the values are not there, then there is no use of properties, right? Yeah, so in that case, name is the logical name, right? In that case, in that particular case. See, name is a basic property. That's okay. all. Okay. That basic property value. So this is the basic property and this is the value. Okay, understood. This value will be considered as a logical name. Right? Okay. Okay. So what is a basic property for every object? We will discuss now. Okay. So object last name and the logical name. So the commonly occurred objects are window, push button, radio button, check box, drop down box, text box, then so these are all the common objects, right? So for a class name, sorry, for an object, the class name is window only and the logical name is title. So here logical name title in the is title value, right? Here I'm saying that value. I can say instead of title value for it, make it clear. So the basic property here we can call it as a basic property. So whenever we are performing the operations on the window, then every time the QTP will consider the title is a basic property and this basic property value will be considered as a logical name, right? Right start up. Some pay, some application I am accessing. So here this a page is also one window, right? A page is also belongs to a category called window only. Right? So then what is the last column it will take for this page? Right start. 
Maybe, maybe it's three. Whatever you are seeing in the field, that will be considered as a logical name, right? Because title. So if I go to this other one, the, the title will change here. See, this is the title of this, right? For this page, this is the title. This value will be considered as a logical name. Feeding hyphen rice data. Okay. Got it? Clear? Yes. Sir. Okay. Answer is that clear? So push button. Just now we discussed. Suppose if you see here, if I click on this create registry, right? But then, then it will take the logical name as create registry because create a registry is a label value, right? So as we said that label is a basic property and that value is a logical name. That value will be considered as a logical name. So label is equal to create a history. So create a history will be considered as a logical name. Okay. okay, fine. Right, radio button. So radio button, radio button only, and the logical name, checkbox also. So for both the checkbox and the radio buttons, the logical name is right side text value. Right side text value. Right? So whenever this is performing the operations related to the object or checkbox or radio button, so it will take the logical name as right side text value. Whatever the text that will appear right side of that radio button or checkbox, that will be considered as a logical name. Suppose if you see here, uh, this is a radio button, right? If I select this radio button, then it will consider this is the last color. Right side text is high chase. Okay, there is radio buttons here. There are no radio buttons. Let me go to another application. So here if you see, this is a checkbox. If you perform, if I uncheck or check this checkbox, then it will take the last column as keep me signed in. Right. Because this is the text appearing right side of that checkbox. In the same way for radio button also. So right, if there is are any radio buttons, so if you perform the operation on the radio button, whatever the text that will appear right side of the radio button, that will be considered as a last column. See, if I select this radio button, this one. This is a radio button. Then mail will be considered as a plus color because this is the text appearing right side of that radio button. Okay. And the drop down box. So for the drop down box, it will be considered as a combo box, the class name, and it will be considered as an edit for the text box. So here the class names are different for the drop down box and the text box. So for the drop down box, the class name is considered as a combo box and edit for the text box. So for this one, top left or left side text value. So for the text box and the drop down box, it will take the logical name as right left side text or top left side text of that objects. Okay. Here if you see Uh, drop down box. This is not correct. We have that month, month, day, and year, right? Month, day, yeah, yeah. 
but so these are different because if you see here there's a text box right these are text box right and or something so but i don't i do not find any text appearing right left side or top left side right yes if you observe clearly right so sometimes the standard logical name defined may not be exists for an objects like this at that time what should what it will take we will discuss it later right okay so we'll go for right start dot com If I enter something here, right? Then with respect to this text box, it will take the logical name as email address because that is the text which is appearing top left side of the text box, right? Okay. Even this one, this is a drop down box, right? Some options. If I select an option, then it will consider this one. Favorite right star store location because this is a text appearing. top left side of the text box sorry top down box okay got it yeah. so this is what menu menu only right and even the logical name is also menu one question yes sir yeah so, yeah, so the thing is that like in the front end like uh, they might have some labor but even in the back end they'll be having the same option it's not Okay. So, because backend in the coding, we are not going to worry about that. We are testing GUI testing, right. graphical user interface testing. So, QTP is for front end testing application, right? right? So, QTP will not bother what is there in the coding for that object, right? Okay. What properties are defined, all those things. It is not going to worry about that. So, it is going to identify the object which is appearing in the front end page. Okay. So based on the tone, it is taking the properties. Okay. So till now clear, both of you. Yes. Yes. So we are saying that based on this syntax, right? So the PDB is going to generate the script. So if you see here, so to understand this syntax. So before going to discuss, we have discussed all this object, object properties, types, what is class name, what is class color. Now you can see window. For every window, sorry, for every window based application, it will start with window. So what is the window? That window class color. In that window, what is the test object? That is either you are performing the operation on a button, radio button, check box, text box, whatever it may be, right? That object class name. So test object should be replaced with the class name of the object, and the logical name of the object, and the operation we have performed. Right? Right. One question here, Mr. Harry. So, yeah, like, you said that UTP uh, is used to test uh, Windows as well as web based. So, does UTP support web service uh, component as well? No. No. Web service is okay. We are talking about web services only, right? Yeah, right. No, no, web services it will not support as well. Only front end. Okay. okay. So, like somewhere I heard that uh, the latest version of UTP is UTP uh, supporting. Web it's services. not. It's not. It, they are trying to make it implement that feature, but okay. it has failed. Oh, right. So. As of now, the current version is 10.0 in the market. That is the one which is currently using. So they have released 11.0. It's an evolution version, and it got failed actually. Okay. Okay. So then they are trying to again implement with some feature competitive to other other tool, right? So which they are defining as a UFT, Unified Functional right. Testing Tool. Both are same. Just they have changed the name of the QTP as Unified Testing Tool. 
right? Okay. What are the features are there? Same features, but they are adding some new features, which makes that uh, tool to have a compete with the other tools. So okay. that tool is in the process evolution version. Okay. I am sending the notes to both of you. So the version of uh, QTP we will use for learning purpose is, is it 9.5? 10.0. I will provide you the latest version. Whatever the tools, software sellings, it contains the latest version only. All right. Okay.